This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I have some I have some insight that I want to add today. I think it's very important. It might seem like common sense, but clearly it's not being practiced. We all know that markets are volatile. Markets go up and down on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis. That's the nature of the beast. You can get hurt. Getting hurt is part of the game. Even though you can get hurt in the markets or life, that doesn't stop people from pretending. Let me give a great example. This just came across my airwaves. This is from the United States Post Office, and they had released a bunch of stamps, and you can see these on my website, of kids playing. Football, soccer, juggling, skipping rope, skateboarding. Pretty innocuous, innocent stuff. Before I get into this post office scenario, let me quickly play a clip from CNN that gives you an idea of what they've done exactly. It is time for the Outfront Outtake. The President's Council on Fitness encourages all Americans to be more active. And this week, the U.S. Post Office joined in by introducing a 15-stamp set of children participating in sports. They designed them, got a whole series, and showed them off. And the President's Council immediately killed the project. It seems three of the 15 stamps raised safety concerns. They said the children were doing dangerous things, a cannonball, skateboarding, without knee pads, and doing a headstand without a helmet. Headstands with helmets, seriously. Sadly, the fact that people freaked out about that is not a joke. And as a result, the post office had to destroy the entire run of stamps. So during a shutdown, when the post office is hemorrhaging money, someone is going crazy about cartoon stamp children. On, uh, car- cartoon stamp children. It's amazing more people don't call the government out and the media out for focusing on a story like this. Hey, can I give a quick responder to that? Can I give a quick responder to that CNN clip? One of my favorite congressmen who was tossed out of Congress and thrown in jail, Jim Traficant. He's talking about an issue that's not really related, but boy, is it related. Jim from Ohio is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, politicians have always been known for gas, but a St. Louis alderman had to make an important decision. In the midst of a heated debate, she had to urinate. Now, if that's not enough to threaten a filibuster, the member said, and I quote, rather than leave the chamber, my staff surrounded me with blankets. And ladies and gentlemen, the rest is history. The woman did void. Unbelievable. What's next? Chamber porta potties? How about window urinals? Beam me up. I yield back the fact that when taxpayers say politics stink, they're not talking about the Roto-Rooter man. Now, after that slight diversion, let me get back to my thought. Let me read from their press release. Quote, With the Just Move stamp issuance, the United States Postal Service hoped to raise awareness about the importance of physical activity and achieving a healthy lifestyle. However, according to Lynn's Stamp News, the USPS will be destroying the entire press run after receiving concerns from the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition over alleged unsafe acts depicted on three of the stamps. That would be a cannonball dive, skateboarding without knee pads, and a head stand without a helmet. There's also a batter without a batting helmet, a girl balancing on a slippery rock, and a soccer player without knee pads or shin pads. End quote. I guess that's not from the Postal Service press release. It's from somebody that covers the Postal Service. Who in their right mind has a business covering the Postal Service? Anyways, entirely nuts, right? A headstand without a helmet. 
Has anybody ever practiced yoga? Can you imagine walking into a yoga class with a helmet? But let's just be honest. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road. Let's quickly, let me quickly make the analogy to the United States Federal Reserve. Lowering interest rates to zero. Instead of letting the system clean out, instead of letting the pain, the skinned knees, the broken arms, instead of letting everything just fix itself naturally, the U.S. Federal Reserve, after 2008, interjected, lowered rates to zero, and said, see, no more pain. In a pure form of insanity, the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition is literally saying you can't put a cartoon picture out depicting somebody playing soccer without shin guards. What's happened? How have we got to the point where some failure, some losing, has been deemed so inappropriate that we are going to try to protect everybody and protect everything? Doesn't everyone just naturally get it that if you try and protect everyone and everything, you actually end up causing unforeseen other issues? For example, let's just assume that every child, when he leaves the house in the future, to protect him or her, will put one of those like white Michelin man outfits on. So the kid is entirely in a cocoon-like bubble thing. Well, of course, the kid could be walking down the street. He might not see the car coming. Kid's dead because he had the nice protective suit on. I grew up as a baseball catcher. I played from around the age of 10 into my early 20s, and I played in some seasons with some of the college guys in my mid-20s. And as a catcher, you learn. For those that don't know about a baseball catcher, an American baseball catcher, go to YouTube. But as a baseball catcher, if you are attempting to catch a moving object coming at you from 60 feet, six inches, at by the time I stopped playing, a lot of guys were throwing near 90, some a few notches over 90 miles an hour. But if a ball is coming at you and you're in a game, right? You're in a game and you have to, you have to get used to catching that ball coming at you 90 miles an hour. Well, how do you do that? Well, first off, it's not going to always come straight to your glove and hit you right in the glove. Sometimes it's going to bounce. It's going to go the wrong way. That's why you got equipment on, right? You got a chest protector, you got knee guards. But as a catcher, you learn to practice with balls bouncing in the dirt, hitting you in the groin. That's where you wear a cup as a catcher too. But you learn to let the ball hit you. I can't imagine being a child today and they're taking the most basic lessons away from a child on how to grow up. Even the smallest child often can learn by touching the hot stove. You touch the hot stove, you scream like hell. That hurts. You learn something. Now, instead of the kid touching the hot stove, I guess he can wear some of those fireproof mittens around the house. So when he touches the hot stove, he doesn't even know the stove is hot because he's got these mittens on that protect him. I know everyone can see where I'm going with this. This has become the way of the markets, the way of life. Let's protect and let's pretend there's no downside. Let's pretend there's no errors. There's no black swans. There's no unexpected events. There's no surprises. Everything just goes up in a steady straight line. For example, let's look at the current debt ceiling debate in America. And maybe by the time this podcast is up, something good or something bad may have happened or not happened. Many people talk about the idea that if you don't raise the debt ceiling, all types of things nasty might happen. And like I said, maybe by the time this podcast is up, the market will have crashed a certain amount. Or maybe it would have gone straight up. Who knows? But the issue is, once again, the, the uncertainty, trying to eliminate the uncertainty. So there is no magic fix. 
the fiscal situation of the United States of America is not good. Raising the debt ceiling and keeping everything moving in a straight line, keeping the welfare cards going, keeping Social Security going, even when you've got to just basically raise debt to give people this money, it doesn't make a difference. Because ultimately, it seems like current government leadership is not based on looking out for the swan. Current government leadership is to keep everything going in a straight line and to protect their job, to protect their political position. Because you got to remember, politicians, I don't care whether they're on the, 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 the right or the left, they love sitting in that power seat. That's what they groove off. They groove off it more than you know. And if you've never been a politician, you don't know. I mean, the adulation these people get from being in a power position to where they get you know people fawning over them. And, you know, they can, they can give orders and, and they get to talk to the press and they see their, they see their mugshot all the time on TV. Man, they love that shit. That's just great stuff. But they don't think about the unexpected. They don't think about the surprise. They don't think about the volatility. All they want to do, just like this crazy example with the United States Post Office, all they want to do is eliminate any potential downside. And it's always a short-term elimination. Let's fix the cartoon stamps so nobody can see a child doing a cannonball into a pool. That, of course, is going to stop kids from doing a cannonball into the pool because they didn't see the post office stamp cartoon. Look, let me break the news to you. The markets and life are rough and tumble. If you're sitting out there as some Pollyanna, just thinking that you're going you're gonna to go ahead and you're going to avoid all volatility, you're going to avoid all uncertainty, everything is going to be roses. And look, this is, I have to interject, this is not a negative or pessimistic view at all. This is the way people used to be. People used to be tough. Tough with a capital T. Not macho, but tough. There's a difference. Macho is like those crazy movies that Travolta made wearing cowboy uh, uh, pants and stuff. I mean, that's, or, you know, the village people or something. And I'm not being, I am by no means, am I inferring or implying anything. I'm just saying, I'm not talking macho. I'm talking tough. I'm talking the ability to hit somebody on the chin and take the shot. There's a lot of glass chins walking around right now. Meaning when they get punched, it's just going to crumble. <sighs> just going to crumble out. And to me, this is a fantastic view of society. This is where you profit from. If you can look at the world and say, my God, people are losing their minds. They're trying to protect everybody and they're trying to protect everything. Nobody wants any downside. There's got to be some tremendous opportunity here if the sheeple are being moved to a place where they think they're protected by daddy. Tremendous opportunity. Well, of course there's tremendous opportunity. The buy and hold folks, they are just sitting there because look, the buy and hold folks don't care about having above average. The buy and hold folks just want average. The buy and holder at his very root wants to be just like his neighbor. And have the exact same things as his neighbor. He doesn't want to stand out from the crowd. Look, the stuff that I teach, the lessons that I give, the systems that I show clients, this is for 4% of the population. 96% of you out there, this is not for you. You should really turn me off and just watch the, the news stations. Watch your favorite news station that gives you your favorite view whether that's CNN or Fox, whatever. Just watch your favorite station. Stay in that dreamlike state, that la-la-like state. You'll be fine. But for the 4% of you out there, they, they like, wow, they want to do something different. They want to have a big life. You want to travel. You want to have some extra resources. You've got to think like I think. You've got to think like the people that taught me to think like this. You've got to look at the world not through rose-colored lenses. You've got to look at the world pragmatically, objectively, with a critical eye. This is where the opportunity exists. So the whole thinking 
My whole rant today is just to get you to see that 96% of the population is probably comfortable with the idea of the government telling kids they can't do cannonballs or is comfortable with the idea that the government wants all kids to wear, you know, shin guards when they play soccer. Most people just go, well, that's a good idea. Government's got good intentions. They're nice people. No, they're madmen. Seriously, they're madmen. It's insanity. But here's the nice side of me. What? I, I know I'm, I'm somewhat being redundant, but this, is, this stuff just excites me. It's so much opportunity that if the vast majority of the population is just wandering through the wilderness, trusting their money to some big monolith of a machine, Wow, if you have a system, if you have an approach, if you have rules that are opposite to what the vast majority of the lemmings are doing. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash, or just trying to make a lot of money. Trend following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.